Welcome to our lecture online and here's an example of how we deal with theoretical yields and actual yields or percent yields in a chemical reaction. So here's a very famous chemical reaction. We have iron oxide and we mix it with carbon and we add some heat and then the result is that we get the iron away from the, from the iron oxide and then as a byproduct we have some carbon, carbon monoxide gas. Now this is what we call a coking process. This is how we produce steel and the first step is to get the iron out of the iron ore which usually is contained within this kind of um, mix with oxygen. So we have iron 3 oxide. Now what we do is, as an example, let's say we start out with 30,000 kilograms of this ore, iron oxide. Of course 30,000 kilograms, that's a 30 tons, that's a lot. And so we want to make sure that we get as much of, of the iron out of, out of there as possible. And so we're going to react it with a whole bunch of carbon, 100,000 kilograms or 100 tons. We want to make sure that there's no shortage of carbon. We don't want the reaction to be short-changed so that we don't get all of the iron out. So we put plenty, plenty of coke, as we call it, or carbon, into the mix. So the question now is, what is the theoretical yield? So how much do you think we can get out of it? Well, if 100% of this ore gets separated, the iron gets separated from this ore, and we get all the iron out, then how much would we get if the amount that we started with is 30,000 kilograms? Well, for that, we have to get the relative molar mass of iron oxide and iron by itself. So here I have written the molar mass of iron, which is 55.85 grams, and the molar mass of oxygen. So for one mole of iron oxide, we need two irons, so this is equal to the mass of two irons is equal to uh, two times 55.85 grams and so that would be equal to 111.7 grams. Alright, and then the same for oxygen, now there's three oxygen atoms in there, so we have three moles of oxygen, so the mass of three oxygens is equal to three times 16 grams, because that's the molar mass, that would give us 48 grams. And if we add all, all that together, we get 159.7 grams for one mole of iron 3 oxide. Now, if we want to find the theoretical yield, we can then assume that out of that whole mass, this much of it will be iron, and this would be the mass of the total thing. So if we end up with, um, hmm, so, I'll back up a little bit. So the way we're going to approach that is the theoretical yield, so we'll just write it down, the theoretical yield is equal to the amount that we started with. So we started with 30,000 kilograms and then we're going to multiply that times the ratio of the mass of all the iron divided by the mass of the iron oxide. So if the 30,000 kilograms is represented by the mass of all the iron oxide ore and then we multiply, we divide this by this mass, the molar mass of this, and then we multiply that times the molar mass of just the iron, then we'll get the ratio of the total mass we started with that will be just iron. So the answer then would be 30,000 kilograms times the molar mass of just the iron. Since we have two moles of iron in that sample, we would have 111.7 grams. And then we divide by the molar mass of iron oxide, which is 159.7 grams. That means we would have taken all of the iron out. So here's my calculator. So we start with 30,000 times 111.7 and divide by 159.7. And we end up with 20,983 kilograms. Which means that out of 30,000 kilograms of iron oxide ore, 20 1983 of it is iron and the remainder is oxygen. So theoretically, if we get all of the iron out, we would end up with that much iron. But typically in one process like that, you don't end up with all of it. So as an example, what would be the percent yield if only 15,000 kilogram of that iron was produced? So the percent yield is equal to the ratio of how much was produced. So iron produced divided by the theoretical production and of course this would then be of course the actual yield, the actual yield. So we take the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield and multiply it times 100%. So since the actual yield was only 15,000 kilograms and the theoretical yield if all the iron was produced is 20,983 kilograms, there's the ratio, 
we multiply it times 100%, and that'll give us the percent yield of this in this process. So let's take this to the bottom, times 15,000. And then multiply it times 100, we get 71.5%. And that would then be the, the percent yield of this process. So we only get 71.5% of all the iron that we otherwise could have retrieved. And that's how you do that.